Hey everybody, today's topic of discussion is oxidation of pyruvate. So in the previous video, we have discussed about the formation of pyruvate during glycolysis process. Now what is the fate of that pyruvate? This pyruvate is then oxidized to form acetyl coenzyme A. This whole process that is conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A is known as oxidative decarboxylation. Oxidative decarboxylation. And this process is occurring inside the mitochondrial matrix. Now what you need to remember here is this mitochondrial matrix. This oxidation process is occurring in the mitochondrial matrix of eukaryotes. But now as prokaryotes do not have mitochondria, so they catalyze this whole reaction inside the cytosol of their cell. So this is occurring in the prokaryotes. I hope this is clear to all of you. Now, how is this process taking place? So, let's discuss that. So, what is happening? There is glucose. It is being converted into pyruvate. And this process is known as glycolysis. Where is this process occurring? So, this process is occurring in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, what happens is this pyruvate is then transported in the mitochondrial matrix. So, this is the diagram of the mitochondrial matrix. Mitochondrial matrix. So, what is happening? is this pyruvate is being transported to the mitochondrial matrix where it gets converted into acetyl coenzyme A. This acetyl coenzyme A then enters the Krebs cycle. We would be discussing about Krebs cycle in the upcoming videos. So what is the main concern of today's video is this whole process that is conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA in the mitochondrial matrix. So, we would be discussing about this whole process. This process is known as oxidative decarboxylation or the oxidation of pyruvate. Now, what happens is this pyruvate this pyruvate is a charged molecule. So, it is charged, it cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane as such. So, there is a need of a transporter protein. So, here the presence of a transporter protein is required. This transport protein then transports the pyruvate from the cytoplasm to the mitochondrial matrix. Is this clear to everyone? Now we would be discussing about the whole process of conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So let's look into it. So we have said that pyruvate is being oxidized to form acetyl-coenzyme A. This process is being catalyzed by a multi-enzyme complex that is known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Now this is a complex of enzymes that is it can be called as a multi-enzyme complex. Now, this complex is made up of three major enzymes. We would be discussing about these three enzymes in a while. 
Now this whole process of conversion also leads to the production of NADH2 from NAD+. And this process is occurring in mitochondrial matrix. We have already talked about it in more detail. Mitochondrial matrix. Now this pyruvate is combining with coenzyme A to form acetyl-CoA. So this CoA is coming from this coenzyme A that is reacting with the pyruvate. Now this whole process is highly exergonic. What does exergonic means? So exergonic means there is high production of energy. So this whole process evolves very much heat or the uh, we can say that there is production of heat energy. Production of energy in the form of heat. Now we would be discussing about this multi-enzyme complex in detail. So let's discuss that. Now this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is made up of three major enzymes. The first enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase itself. So first enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase. This enzyme is also known as E1. Now the second step is Sorry, the second enzyme is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase. Transacetylase. This is the E2 enzyme. The third enzyme is third enzyme is dihydrolipoyl dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase. So these are the three enzymes that are making up the whole de pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. These are E1, E2 and E3. Now these enzymes require coenzymes for working. What are those coenzymes? So E1 requires one coenzyme that is TPP. We would be discussing about its full form in more detail. Next enzyme requires two coenzymes. One is lipoic acid and another one is coenzyme A. The third enzyme also requires two coenzymes. One is NAD plus and another one is FAD. So let us discuss about these coenzymes in more detail. So we have talked about that there are different coenzymes that are required by these three enzymes to work efficiently. What are these coenzymes? So first one is TPP. What is TPP? So TPP is thymine pyrophosphate. Thymine pyrophosphate. Second, en second coenzyme is lipoic acid. Third is coenzyme A. Fourth is NAD plus. And fifth one is FAD. We have already discussed that TPP is being required by the enzyme 1. Lipoic acid and coenzyme A are required by enzyme 2. And NAD plus and FAD are required by enzyme 3. Now, there is another thing that you need to remember is this whole complex. This whole complex of the 3 enzymes that we have discussed 
is also inhibited by certain ions. Now, what are the ions that are inhibiting these three enzyme complex? These ions are arsenite ions, arsenite ions and mercuric ions. So, if there is presence of these two ions inside the mitochondrial matrix, then the whole enzyme complex would not be able to work efficiently and this whole process gets stuck in between. Now, what is the whole mechanism of this oxidative decarboxylation? So, let's discuss that. So, what is the mechanism of this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex? So, this whole mechanism consists of four major steps. The first step includes the action of enzyme 1. This enzyme 1 causes decarboxylation. What is decarboxylation? So, decarboxylation is the removal of carbon dioxide. So, there is removal of carbon dioxide from pyruvate. So, we can say that the first step of this oxidation process is decarboxylation of pyruvate and this is being catalyzed by enzyme 1. Now, along with this decarboxylation, there is production of a substance known as hydroxyethyl, hydroxyethyl TPP. This is the byproduct of first reaction or the first step. So, we can say that the first step is decarboxylation of pyruvate. Second step is the formation of hydroxyethyl TPP. Third step is, what is the third step? Third step is the transfer of two carbon unit. So, there is transfer of two carbon unit to the lipoic acid. So, this is being catalyzed by the enzyme 2. Along with this, there is production of acetyl coenzyme A. So, the pyruvate is now converted into acetyl coenzyme A. The last step involves enzyme 3 and it is reoxidation of, reoxidation of lipoic acid lipoic acid. So, this is it for the whole mechanism of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and this is this whole process is known as oxidative decarboxylation that involves four major steps. First and second step are being catalyzed by enzyme 1. Third step is being catalyzed by the enzyme 2 and fourth step is being catalyzed by the enzyme 3. The fourth step is basically the recycling of lipoic acid that is production of lipoic acid that would act as a coenzyme of enzyme 2. So, this is it for the whole process of oxidative decarboxylation. We are done with this process. In the further videos, we would be discussing about Krebs cycle in detail. So, stay tuned and if you found this video helpful, then please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot.